I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Are you heading out with your sewing machine? Or maybe a family member needs help with a repair, or you're staying with some friends on a quilting retreat. How do you know what to pack? Some people pack too much, some people pack too little, and there are some things that just cannot be forgotten or they'll ruin the whole trip. I have been asked many times what to pack for a retreat. So today I'm going to show you what's in my travel bag and stay to the end where you can download my travel kit packing list. So stick with me and I'll show you how I do it. Hi, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you wanna make. And if you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button. Sometimes you need to take your sewing machine on the road. You might have a request from a family member to help with a repair, or you're going on vacation and you'd like to bring along a project, or maybe you're just joining a group of friends on a retreat. Planning your travel kit ahead of time is so important so that you don't leave anything behind, but you also need to balance this by not burdening yourself with too much stuff. I have a basic travel kit packed and ready to go at all times. In fact, I keep it in my car so I'm always prepared. It contains the bare minimum for me so that I can sew anywhere. I purchased this bag from Michaels with a 60% off Boxing Day coupon. I believe it's actually a scrapbooking travel case. Other than the color, it suits my purposes fine. I like that it, there's a pocket on the front on the lid and two on both sides. And of course it is on wheels. Now remember my video, Organize Your Sewing Space? The foundation is your sewing triangle and this is no different. My sewing machine is my Bernina 910, which I bought way back in 1983. And it's still my favorite machine. When you update your machine, don't trade in your old one, as this is the perfect place to keep it. You know how it works, you have all the accessories, and chances are it has less electronics in it, so it's less fragile. From my interview on Karen's Quilt Circle with Bernina Jeff, I was reminded to store it with the presser foot down. I remove my sewing bed and put it here, and then I take my sewing machine and put it in here in the large compartment your foot pedal, and your power cord. I have seen more retreats ruined by forgetting one or both of these items. With almost everything else, you can purchase missing supplies from a local quilt store or borrow from a friend, but not these items. Even if you're lucky enough to have a dealer nearby, cost to purchase one might be prohibitive. So always check that you have these ones at least three times. Once when you put it in the bag, once when you zip it up and at least one last time before you drive off. This is the original accessories kit that came with my machine. I keep all my presser feet, including the walking foot, together. I also keep a set of bobbins here and tools to clean the machine, which include oil, tweezers, a screwdriver, and a pipe cleaner. For my cutting station, I bring a 45 millimeter rotary cutter with extra blades. And when the old blades are full, I take it home and sharpen them with my sharpener and put them back in the new one. And I store my rotary cutter and my blades in this front pocket. And I keep a pair of shears here too. Cutting boards are the toughest to bring along as the larger ones are harder to carry. They also need to lie flat and if they warp, they're ruined and then very expensive to replace. So I have compromised with this 14 inch rotary cutting board. It can't cut width of strip fabrics easily. So I do those at home, but it's perfectly fine for all the slicing, trimming and squaring that I need to do. And I carry two rulers, a 12 and a half square and a 12 by six. Not only is this ruler easy to hold, it also has the 30, 45, and 60 degree lines if I have to do some specialty cutting. And they all tuck in nice and neatly right here in the front. For my ironing station, I have purchased a 14 inch by 14 inch wool ironing mat. And I have this mini Alessio iron. And I put it inside this scrap catcher with a small spritz bottle. And I tuck it into the side pocket of the case. 
and the wool mat just slides in here. I've also tucked in the following extension cords because power is not always close and I carry two. And I carry this one now with the USB ports so I can also charge my iPhone and my watch. And I use Velcro straps to keep it all tidy. A roll of masking tape. Not only do I use this for ledges, but I've MacGyvered myself out of a couple of situations with it. I tuck a cleaning cloth into the side pocket into this black pencil case, I am going to put a cuticle stick, a pencil for marking, a Sharpie. I'm going to put some clips. Just got to clip them here on the pocket. A thimble, measuring tape, a larger clip, a stitch ripper, some needles, a stick of glue, and some snips. And I tuck them all in and they go here. I also keep a set of neutral threads and a set of needles in 70, 80, 90, and a denim one. Into this pocket on the lid, I am going to put my threads, my sewing machine needles, and my pin cushion with pins in it. So that's my travel bag. It is a bit heavy, but it has two handles on the side that I can lift the bag from. And once it's on the rollers, it's easy peasy and I store it in my car with two bungee cords so that it doesn't move around. This kit, it goes in my car and goes everywhere my car goes. I have been perfecting this over the years and right now I feel this is a really good system. Not only can it handle about 90% of my quilting and sewing needs, it also has a small footprint for those situations where I need to share a table or I don't have a lot of space. Time away means I also have time to try other things. And Skillshare is a great way to learn. It's so easy to pick up my iPad and start a class. And Skillshare has thousands of inspiring classes on design, illustration, content creation, and more. I'm always discovering new and different classes that I watch while I pick up my hand sewing. My latest favorite is Pattern Play in Procreate by Vinthia Mammon. Just look at these colors. I find it so inspiring. What I enjoy most is that most classes are designed to be completed in 60 minutes or less. They include a combination of video and class project. They can then be fitted into the short blocks of time in your day. There are also classes for a variety of skill levels from beginner to professional. Skillshare is incredibly affordable, especially when compared to in-person classes and workshops. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click on the link in the description will receive a free trial of Skillshare Premium. When I know I'm going to have time to sew or I'm going to spend time with friends, I bring along projects. Now, how many projects do I take? Well, it depends on how many days I'm going for. In general, I like to take one project for every day of sewing, plus a hand sewing project. More importantly for me, I like to take projects that are at different stages of quilting. So I like a 30 minute starter project, a fast finish project, a binding project, a scrappy block project, a free motion quilting project, and English paper piecing. But not all of them, just a variety. Because I don't know what I will be inspired to do that day. I want choices and I also want to feel that I've accomplished something by the end. I also need to remind myself that relaxing and disconnecting can be just as important when I'm away from home. So I need to be realistic and not overpack. Before I pack, I review each of my project's patterns and pack any extra items like tools, rulers, thread and supplies, and I keep them all separate in a container on its own. This also keeps the project from sprawling. I also try to do any major cutting before I go. So if I need to cut strip sets or large squares, I do that at home where I have the space to spread out. Now, depending on where I'm going, I might consider other items like a seat cushion or leg risers, a light, a design board, this beauty is more awkward to put up, but it's great when I don't have the wall space or I'm not allowed to stick anything on the walls. When I am going with friends, we usually divide the responsibility of the larger items between us. One brings the ironing board and iron, another one brings the big cutting boards, another person brings the tables. And I mark my tool with my name. I like to share, I also like to move about, 
and despite my best efforts to stay organized, my tools like to wander. And before I drive off, I give myself a moment to check my bags. Normally, I count them because my suitcase can look very similar to my sewing bag. And I often make so many trips to the car that I can easily leave something behind, especially if I'm sharing trunk space with another quilter. And remember to triple check that power cord and foot pedal. Well, this is my travel bag. If you are wanting to download a copy of my travel kit packing list, you can find it on my website at jessicadunquilts.com.